human flight, thousands of years before the Wright brothers? Let's unravel the mystery of the Saqqara bird. This, this isn't just a carving, it's something more. Everyone, gather around. I believe we found something extraordinary. What is it, Khalil? Egyptian knowledge of aerodynamics. Aerodynamics? In ancient Egypt? That's a bold claim. I know it sounds unbelievable, but look at the design. It lacks legs and has a tail like a rudder. It's as if it was meant to glide. But why would they need a model of a glider? That's what we need to find out. This could change every everything we know ab about ancient Egyptian technology. You hold secrets, my little friend, secrets that could rewrite history. Discovered in 1898 by archaeologist Khalil Masiha in the necropolis of Saqqara, Egypt, this unassuming artifact has stirred a whirlwind of debate among historians, engineers, and enthusiasts. The Saqqara bird, a small sycamore wood carving dating back to around 200 BCE, is only 18 centimeters wide and weighs just 39 grams. But it's not what it is made of or its age that fascinates us. It's its design. Such a small thing to hold so many secrets. What do you see, Khalil? Potential. A glimpse into a world we might never fully understand. Look at it. It seems ordinary, but... But with those details, it's anything but. Exactly. Notice the tail. It's vertical, like a modern plane's rudder. No legs either. It's almost as if as if it was never meant to be a bird at all. Is it just artistic expression, or could it point to something more profound? A glimpse into an ancient mind, perhaps? Or a clue waiting to be deciphered? One thing's for sure, it challenges what we think we know. Mainstream Egyptology suggests it might have been symbolic, representing Horus, you know, the falcon deity linked with the sky and the sun. That makes sense, but then others say it could have been something as simple as a child's toy or even a weather vane. All these interpretations seem plausible, especially when you think about where it was found. An ancient tomb, it's almost like a puzzle with missing pieces. It's the context that intrigues me. Why this design? Why here? Maybe it was meant to be more than just a symbol or a toy something that held a deeper purpose or meaning. Let's not forget the Egyptians were masters of art and symbolism. Could we be missing something profound? Whatever its true purpose, it's challenges like these that keep our passion alive. You know, there are those theories, the really controversial ones. Remember Khalil Messiha's proposal in 1969? Right, he suggested the Saqqara bird was more than just a symbol or toy. He thought it might actually be evidence of ancient Egyptian knowledge in aerodynamics. A prototype for a functioning glider, perhaps? It's incredible to even consider. Could this little carving have been part of something much grander? An early exploration of flight, hidden in plain sight? Imagine it. The Egyptians experimenting with flight. It's a fascinating thought, isn't it? All right, let's see if this little guy can fly. Remember, we're testing for gliding capabilities, not powered flight. Messiha's theory could redefine our understanding of ancient technology. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. True. But imagine if the Egyptians had cracked aerodynamics or if it's just an ancient toy and we're overthinking it. To test Masiha's theory, researchers have built replicas of the Saqqara bird. When these models were placed in wind tunnels or thrown by hand, they demonstrated some gliding capabilities. However, the results were mixed. Increasing wind speed now. All right, it glides somewhat, uh, but not consistently. It lacks stability. Without a horizontal stabilizer, true flight seems un unlikely. Yet it does show some promise, maybe with modifications. But those modifications weren't part of the original artifact. We can't ignore that. 
The mixed results leave us with more questions than answers. Look at that. The absence of a horizontal stabilizer is really affecting its flight. Exactly, it's fascinating that such a small modification could make such a significant difference. Once we added the stabilizer, its performance improved dramatically. Could the Egyptians have conceptualized something so advanced? Or is this just a happy accident? It's hard to say, but the improvement is undeniable. We can't ignore the implications. If they did understand this, it changes everything we know about their technological capabilities. Let's run the test again, but this time, let's compare it with modern aircraft designs. See how it stacks up. Look at this. The simulations show some aerodynamic properties, but and um, it's not enough for true gliding. We need sustained flight for it to be revolutionary. So what does that mean for the Saqqara bird? Well, it's intriguing, but it falls short. Still, it's a glimpse into what might have been possible. Do you think it was just coincidence then? Possibly, or maybe they knew more than we give them credit for. Either way, it's fascinating. We can't ignore the implications. There's still a lot of doubt, isn't there? Absolutely, many experts just aren't sold on the glider theory. Right, and there's no solid evidence, nothing in the archaeological record that suggests they were playing with aviation tech. So, are we just projecting modern ideas onto ancient artifacts? Maybe. Without corroborative evidence, we're just speculating. It feels like we're grasping at shadows, trying to find meaning where there might be none. Or maybe we're just stubbornly curious. Not everyone is convinced by the glider theory. Critics argue that the bird lacks essential features for practical flight. Furthermore, there's no corroborative evidence of tools or technology that would suggest the Egyptians experimented with aviation. Without such evidence, the aerodynamic claims remain speculative. It's still worth exploring, though. Every mystery deserves its day. You know, whether it was symbolic, ceremonial, or maybe even experimental, the Saqqara bird really reminds us of something bigger. Humanity's fascination with flight. And given how advanced the ancient Egyptians were in engineering and mathematics, exactly, they were masters of their craft. It wouldn't be entirely surprising if they were dabbling in the principles of the air. I mean, they did build the pyramids. Who knows what else they were capable of? It's a tantalizing thought, isn't it, that there could be so much more we don't know. That's what keeps us coming back, doesn't it? The mysteries yet. Whether it was symbolic, ceremonial, or experimental, the Saqqara bird reminds us of humanity's enduring fascination with flight. The ancient Egyptians were masters of engineering, mathematics, and art. It wouldn't be entirely surprising if they had dabbled in understanding the principles of the air. The true purpose of the Saqqara bird may never be known. Do you think it really flew? I doubt it, but it's fascinating to imagine, isn't it? It could be a mere toy, a symbol of divine power, or perhaps an early exploration of flight. You know, sometimes the mystery is more important than the answer. One thing is certain, its mystery continues to inspire and captivate us. What do you think? Could the Saqqara bird be proof of ancient flight?